We're making the Valentine scarf. Scarf with pockets. Cross stitch heart? What? Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tiffany. I'm so excited for you to be here today. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make my Valentine scarf. It has pockets and a cross stitched heart on the front of the pockets. What? I've taken two art forms, crochet and cross stitch, and combined them together in this project. And what I'm hoping for is that it just explodes your creative brain, opens up a whole new world of crochet possibilities, and just gets you really excited to create so many amazing things. Now this scarf is completely adjustable. You can make it as long or short as you want. You can make the pockets as deep or shallow as you want them to be. The only thing I caution you with is making sure that the width of the scarf is wide enough to fit the heart shape on the pocket, okay? And I'm gonna go more into this information in the tutorial itself, so don't worry, I've got you covered. The pattern for this Valentine scarf you can find in both the description section and comment section below this video, where all you have to do is click on that link, purchase the pattern, and be ready to crochet with me. As always, you don't need to purchase the pattern in order to accomplish this project. I'm gonna have instructions on the screen, diagrams on the screen, I'm gonna have everything that you need so you can just follow along with this video and be able to make this project. Though having a written pattern can come in handy at times, especially with that diagram. All right, when you are ready to make this Valentine scarf, let's dive into what materials I used to make it. The materials that you're gonna need to make the Valentine scarf will include two different colors of yarn. I have both Karen Simply Soft in Soft Pink and Karen Simply Soft in the color Watermelon. That is what I am using. If you are wanting to substitute the yarn did make it different than what I used. There are actually two other types of yarn that I would highly recommend you substitute, and that would be Premier Ever Soft Yarn or Yarn Beast Soft Secret. All three of these yarns are very similar and will work up very similar. If you are unable to get any of those skeins or you just want to utilize what you have in your yarn stash, this is just a size four weight worsted, medium, Aran, 10, 12 ply or 8 WPI sized yarn. Now it might turn out a little different based on the uh, texture or the brand of yarn that you are using, but it should stay fairly in line with the project. All right, so I used more than one skein of the soft pink color. This is quite a long scarf that we are making. So I would recommend two skeins using the Karen Simply Soft yarn to make the scarf portion. And then when it comes to the other color, color number two, we are using that color as a border for the scarf and to cross stitch the heart into the pocket. So you don't need as much yarn, definitely get, get away with one skein, but unfortunately I don't have the exact amounts for you because I utilized what was in my yarn stash and I unfortunately didn't have that information for you but that should at least give you an idea of approximately how much yarn to have ready to go. The crochet hook that I used was an H8 or five millimeter crochet hook. You're gonna need a pair of scissors, yarn needle, tapestry needle to both weave, weave in your ends and do the cross stitching portion of the heart onto the pocket. A measuring tape will help us to stay dimensionally on track and make sure both sides of the scarf for the pockets are symmetrical. And then also some stitch markers to when we are joining the scar or the pocket, making the pocket, the stitch markers will come in handy to keep everything in place. That way it doesn't shift on you when you are joining one side and then coming back to join the other. Sound good? All right, I'm gonna have links to everything you see here in both the comment section and description section below this video. So if you need help getting your hands on anything, all you have to do is click on that link, purchase the item and have it shipped directly to you. Make it easy peasy to get your hands on anything here. Uh, if you want to utilize whatever's in your own stash, go for it. If you wanna purchase your own yarn, have fun. Uh, just go ahead and make sure you have everything necessary to make this project. And then let's dive right into actually making the Valentine scarf. 
All right, so to begin the Valentine scarf, the dimensions of the scarf are going to be 6.5 inches wide, and then it's going to be 69.5 inches long. That's just the measurements that my scarf came out at. If you wanna make yours longer, you can absolutely deviate or adjust your scarf however you want it to be, make it narrower. Uh, and pay attention though, when you're making it narrow, narrower, <laughs> Uh, that the diagram of the heart will still fit on your pocket. It'll still fit within the width, okay? So really take a peek at that diagram. That way you can make sure that there's enough stitches side to side for that heart to fit in there. All right, so also the pocket is eight inches deep. So when I fold the end of the scarf up, the pocket will be eight inches deep for your hand. And that is also adjustable however you want this to fit. Just wanted to give you the dimensions really fast. Okay, so to begin our Valentine scarf, take whatever color you are utilizing for the main body of the scarf and your crochet hook. Going to begin with a tail long enough for us to weave in our ends at the end of the project. Great. Perfect. Okay, so we begin by chaining 26 chains. One, two, three, four, five, six, 24, 25, and 26. Great. Okay, so for row one of our scarf, we are just going to single crochet in the second chain from our crochet hook. Remember that the loop on our hook does not count as a stitch. Count our Vs. So got one, two, Going to single crochet and then you're going to make one single crochet stitch in every chain all the way across that's all we are doing let's go ahead and get through row one i'll meet you at the end of row one to show you how to do row two and basically the rest of the body of the scarf Okay, just finishing up row one. Great, all right, so what we do next to get on to row two, we will just chain one, turn our work, and then all we're going to do for row two is make a single crochet stitch in the first stitch space, and one single crochet stitch in every stitch space all the way across. You should end row two with a total of 25 stitches, 25 crochet stitches. Now we're gonna repeat row two through the end of row 478. Yes, this is a long scarf. We need the scarf to be extra long so that way the ends of the scarf we can fold in to create the pockets. So we're making it extra long in that regard. Now for me, I made my scarf so that way it could wrap around my neck once and I could put my hands in my pockets comfortably. If you want to adjust and make your scarf just go around your neck, or maybe you don't need the arms as long, you can adjust the number of rows as needed. Absolutely. Don't think it affects the scarf in any way. The length is just the length. But go ahead and make as many rows as you like. I made 478. <laughs> this part of the scarf takes a while. We need the stitches to be single crochet stitches because that is what we are going to need for the back platform for us to do our cross stitching on the work. Okay, go ahead, go ahead, take a second or more than a second, create the inner body of this scarf and I will meet back up with you here with the video to show you what we do next with the ends of our scarf, folding our pocket or creating the pocket and crocheting the border around the scarf. Okay, so I created this small little demo example of what we will need in order to finish off the scarf or the next part of the scarf. If I were to make an entire scarf, it would just take way too long. So let's get to what you will need to do for the next step. Grab your second color. So for me, it's the watermelon color from Karen Simply Soft. 
I'm going to start with a tail long enough for me to weave in my ends at the end of the project, create my slip knot, attach my crochet hook. Okay, to attach the new color of yarn onto our project, we will just go to the very first stitch. So if you wanna look at this side of the work where our tail already was, insert into that first stitch space yarn over, pull through and slip stitch to just attach the second color. Chain one, and then single crochet into that same stitch we just slip stitched into, and then make one single crochet stitch in each stitch all the way across. So that part is just easy peasy. So let me get to the end here. So that's row one. We're going to do one more row, so a total of two rows with this second color at the end of uh, both ends of our scarf. So chain one, turn our work, make one single crochet stitch in the first stitch and in each stitch all the way across. And then we will repeat what we did here on the other side, joining this watermelon hot pinkish color by slip stitching into the first stitch, chain one, single crochet in each stitch all the way across, then chain one to get to the next row and make one single crochet stitch all the way across. And you will be done with that portion of the step. Once you are all done with the second side of the scarf, adding this color to the second side, go ahead, cut your yarn, grab the tail, Pull the tail through the end for a, for a tie off right there. Okay, so once you make this color on the other side of the scarf, I need you to weave in all of your ends before we move on to the next step, okay? Just clean it all up that way everything is out of the way and we can move on. Makes things so much easier. Okay, so go ahead, take a second, make the second color on the other side of your scarf weave in all of your ends and I will meet up back with you to show you what we do next. Great, at this point, you have a border on both ends of your scarf and we're ready to move on to the next step. The next step is creating the pocket. So for me, I will take the end of the scarf and fold it up, okay? Take your measuring tape and then measure from the bottom fold of your pocket on up. For me, I ended up hitting eight inches. That's how deep my pocket was. For this little mini example, we're just gonna go two inches. All right, there we go. Then we're gonna take our stitch markers and we're going to pin that pocket into place so it doesn't shift on us following the row all the way over. There we go. Perfect. And then if it helps you, go ahead and add more stitch markers down the line, just again to help prevent any shifting that may occur. There we go. Perfect, great. And now we are all set up to do the border on the sides of our scarf. And this will also join the pocket to make the pocket stay. So taking our secondary color, we're going to start with a tail long enough for us to weave in our ends, create our slip knot, attach our crochet hook. Great, I'm gonna start with this upper part of or this side right here. Take your crochet hook, insert it into the very first stitch space here, all the way across. So here I entered this side, exited that side. Okay, we're gonna slip stitch just to join the yarn to the project. There we go. Chain one, and we are ready to begin. So go ahead and make a single crochet stitch in the side of the very first row here. And next row, 
You'll be able to identify your rows. See these lines here? These lines identify every two rows. So here I have a line here and a line here. So I have one and I'll need to make a second stitch in between these two lines here. So next row, I'm actually going to single crochet two stitches in. So one, two, insert my crochet hook all the way through, yarn over, pull through, and then keep extending up till this yarn meets the side of your work. Yarn over, pull through. Great. Next row, we're going to make a single crochet stitch, just one stitch in. Move my stitch marker real fast. And then this, the following row, I'm going to make a single crochet stitch, two stitch spaces inward. Again, pulling so that the yarn meets the edge of the work. Yarn over, pull through. This is known as the, eyel the eyelash stitch. And we're just going to repeat this pattern one, two, one, two, all the way up the side of the work, the entire work. So we're gonna start here with the pocket, joining the pocket or closing the pocket right here. I'm gonna move this stitch marker. And then two. And then one. And two. Great. And then even when you're done with the pocket, we continue the pattern onward. So next stitch, I'm gonna do one. Following stitch, one, two. Then one, one, two. Continuing that eyelash stitch all the way up the side of our work. All right, and then when you get to the other side of your scarf, you fold this side in, pin it down with your stitch markers here, and then you just don't even skip a beat. Just keep going like you're a sewing machine and you're just continuing on all the way to the end of your work. All right, so for just example purposes, we'll go one and two and however you end whatever number you end on for me it ended on one how you will end your the side of your scarf you'll grab your scissors cut a long enough tail for you to weave in your ends yarn over that tail pull it through tie off your work and then rotate and repeat the same process on the other side all the way across. And that's it. That's all we need to do to form the pocket. And then the pocket, however, pocket right here is formed and it's really, really neat. All right, go ahead and make this other side, then come back and I will show you the very last step, which is cross stitching onto our work that heart shape onto the pocket. All right, so this very last step is just cross stitching the heart shape onto the pocket. I actually saved the original work, my demo, the second pocket so that I could work on it with you together. That way it's exactly how your scarf may look. The dimensions on the side, 25 stitches across. The dimensions here from top from bottom to top, this is eight inches. So the dimensions should be the exact same that you're working with if you are following my pattern exactly. Now, the, I did include a diagram of this heart we are cross stitching onto the pocket in the pattern. If you cannot get the pattern for some reason, I will go ahead and attach a quick picture of this diagram here on the screen for you to look at. Pause the video if you need to and count all of your rows, count all of the stitches to make sure that you're staying on track. I made sure that I made this diagram on point with the dimensions of this pocket so that way it would fit. <laughs> all right, let's go ahead and get started. So yarn needle, tapestry needle, gonna need that. Your scissors 
and the color you are using for the heart. So we are going to be running out of yarn periodically. I'm just going to cut long strips. Cut long strips. And we'll have to come back for more as needed. Now, when you feed through your yarn needle, what we're gonna do is we're going to double up the, the yarn, the thread. So take the two tails two tails and make sure they're even. Here's the needle, here are the ends. Tie a knot here. And I try to keep the tails long enough so when I'm done with the work, I can still weave in those tails into the work to clean everything up. So making sure those tails are long. Great, and we're ready to begin. So looking at the diagram, we're going to start on row 16 from the bottom. So here I have, remember, check your rows. Know that the rows will help you to count every two rows. Here, let me get this little, little tiny fur. There we go, okay. So I have one and then three, five, seven, nine, 11, 13, 15, so 16, 17. Right here is row 16, 17, okay. And then I look at my diagram and I'm going to go ahead and insert my first stitch at stitch 14 from the side. So looking at the work, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Just work my way up here. Oh, great, I'm right on track. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and Insert my hand on the inside of the pocket, find that stitch and pinch that stitch. If you need to recount, do it as many times as you need to, to stay on track. I'm gonna take my yarn needle and I'm gonna zoom in real close here. So these two rows are the rows that I'm working with, 16 and 17 here. If I stretch out this stitch, You'll see, oh, here's row 16 and here is row 17. You'll see that there's four openings or four gap spots around that stitch. My needle. I'm gonna insert into this bottom corner. There we go. And then go diagonal. There we go. And then come over all around that 16th row, 14th stitch in. And then diagonal down. There we go. And then we have a little X shape around that stitch. Pretty cute. Okay, so next we're going to move up to row 17. Row 17 is going to have a stitch right above it and one stitch to the side and one stitch to the side on each side of it. So I'm gonna start by identifying, okay, here is the stitch right here. I'm gonna start on the, at the stitch right next to it and then work my way to the other side. So taking my yarn needle, finding that stitch, finding the four holes around that stitch, gonna start with the bottom corner. There we go. And then work diagonal. Now, if you're struggling to see these holes, stretch your work. By stretching your work, those holes will become very apparent for you to work with. There we go. Then over. And down. Great. Now I'm going to reverse it and I'm gonna come diagonal up, 
then back down then top and bottom and if you want to you can actually just keep working on one side I'm gonna go diagonal that way I'm not having to keep reaching underneath come diagonal and then go up and over for that cross and that's how it's looking so far pretty neat right okay so for the next row row 18 we're going to make a total of five stitches so it'll be uh, a cross stitch on top of every already created stitch and then one more stitch to one side and one more stitch to the other side making it even symmetrical diagonal out this way okay so i'm going to start up and over cross and up and across and I'm going to pop back out the same exact stitch space that I just came from and then go down across up across and back in that same hole I just came from down up down same hole great down or diagonal down up down same hole last stitch here so diagonal down up diagonal down and now we would be ready to move on to the next row now we're going to continue making this expanding diagonal V shape for the bottom of the heart. We're going to continue adding one more stitch over and continuing to go all the way through row 24. Okay, so 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. I'll meet you at the end of row 24 to show you how we do the straight sides of the heart and then together we'll do the bumps on the top. All right. Okay. Again, if you need to, you can slow down the video. Just go to settings and hit playback speed and slow down the video. That way you can really see what I'm doing. I'm going to try to zoom into this step as close as possible just to really aid with any instruction or example that you may need. This is a very new technique to many people, but I hope that it just completely opens your eyes to so many more things that you can do with crochet. Great, we have just finished row 24 all the way up. This is where you should be at. This is what you should be seeing at the moment. For row 25, 26, and 27, we're going to keep the same number of stitches in each row as we cross stitch up. Okay, so for the next three rows, we're going to make a total of 17 cross stitches in each row. And then I'll come back to you at the end of row 27, moving on to row 28, when we start the humps at the top of the heart. All right. It's pretty fun. Pretty cool, right? I hope you are enjoying this. Great, we have just finished row 27. We are now ready for row 28. Row 28, we are starting the top of the humps. So we're going to keep working the outermost side. So continuing this line up the outside of our stitches. And then we're going to go eight stitches in one way and eight stitches in the other direction. You should have one stitch left alone here and that is the centermost part of that heart shape. 
All right, so let's go ahead and continue working row 28, making eight stitches in from the outside inward. For me, I like to work the heart one hump at a time. So we're gonna go ahead and just keep to one side for now, and then we will just repeat everything we did on this side on the other side. So here is row 28. We're now on row 29. Row 29, we're actually going to come in a stitch this way and come in a stitch this way. So there should be only a total of six stitches that we cross stitch along this row 29. So up and over. three, four, five, six. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and stop there. I don't think I'll have enough yarn to finish off the last row, so I'll go ahead and just tie this off and add more yarn. Tie that off, off with a slip knot, leaving enough of a tail for me to weave in my ends. More yarn. There we go. Okay, so we are now on to Yes, we've made it to our last row. So row 30 is our very last row for the top of the heart. And with row 30, we again are going in one more stitch on each side of the row. So you should end row 30, one hump of row 30 should have a total of four stitches that we cross stitch along the top. So going up and over, start here. One, two, three, and four. That's it. That is the top of our first hump. Oh, it looks so great that it's almost done. Go ahead and repeat everything we just did on the other side. Remember, for row 28, we're just gonna make eight stitches from the outermost side in. Row 29, we come in a stitch on both sides, so there's a total of six stitches we cross stitch for row 29. Row 30, we go in again on both sides. There should only be four stitches that you cross stitch for a total a four stitches here in row 30. Okay, so go ahead and finish this off and then you're done. You are all done with this cross stitch heart. I hope you love it. I hope you think it's super neat and that maybe it inspires you to cross stitch other amazing diagrams or pictures onto your crochet projects. It just opens up the box for so many possibilities and I hope that you thought this was neat. After you're done making the other side, Come back on the inside of your pocket, maybe fold it inside out. Weave in all of your tails or clean this up so that way when you put your hand in your pocket, you're not feeling all of these tails sticking out. And then your Valentine scarf is complete. I hope you had fun.
All right, guys, so what did you think of the Valentine scarf? What did you think of the eyelash border I put on the edge? And even let me know, how was your experience cross-stitching on crochet? Were there any challenges in there? Or did you just have a great time? Please let me know, I'd love your feedback. If you liked this video, please push that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you haven't yet, that way you don't miss my upcoming videos. Check out my membership program, see if there's a level that would fit you best. I would love for you to join. If you had fun with this video, check out these videos right here. They're just more Valentine's videos that you can have fun with. Or check out this video, which is just a recommended video for you to watch. Thank you so much for spending time with me today, crocheting with me. I always love crocheting with you. I hope you have the best day and I will see you with my next video. Bye guys.